Hello, and welcome to Chris's Ticks. Today we'll be reviewing the Timex Electric series of movements. I own a ton of these watches, and as you may have noticed in my previous videos, I really do love myself some pre-quartz electric watches. And at times, I get a bit annoyed at people when they confuse anything to do with a battery to mean a quartz watch. So today we'll be looking at the Timex M40 and its variants. The pre-quartz electric watch movement from the 60s and onward made by Timex. So, in today's video, we'll start with an ad read, and we'll define the movement type. Then we'll look at the movement, and I'll share my thoughts on it, as well as go over how this thing actually works. Now, let's start with the ad read. The ad read. This is a tamer ad than we've seen in my previous videos, and it reads, Wear an electric power plant on your wrist. Wear a power plant that gives you steady electric accuracy. A power plant that sees to it that you never have to wind a watch again. Because there is a tiny replaceable energy cell inside that runs for a full year, the Timex Electric from $25, dust resistant, water resistant, with an automatic calendar from $30, with a day date from $35, the Timex Electric from $25. You couldn't wind it if you wanted to. So, what is an electric watch? According to our friend Wikipedia, we'll define an electric watch as the following. In horology, the term electric watch is used for the first generation electrically powered wristwatches. Specifically, in the case of the Timex Electric M40 series and similar movements, it is the most basic type of electric watch. The movement is very simple and it's referred to as a moving coil, contact controlled electric movement. We'll go into the details about this a bit later. I however do want to point out something about the basic Timex design. This has been used throughout several movements such as the Timex Dynabeat, which is a version of it which has an increased beat rate. The Timex Q Quartz, which in the original version, not the reissue one, is an electric watch with a quartz regulator bolted on. There's also variations that have a GMT function, and there may be more, seeing that as Timex used the basic movement prolifically, and they probably did this to save money on design and production. As with most vintage things from Timex, this watch is a pretty basic construction. It looks similar to the mechanical offerings of the time. Lots of stamped metal, minimal jeweling. The electric series actually came with three jewels, all on the balance assembly, so it's a bit of a step up. The watches were cheap. As seen in the ad, it starts at 25 USD in 1973 dollars. Using an inflation calculator, we see that in 2021, that's roughly 150 USD. Pretty good value at the time for what was more or less cutting edge technology. An electric watch that had a battery that lasts a whole year. For all that money, you get an electric watch doing 21,600 beats per hour. And in my surviving copies, or the ones that I've brought back to life, they're running reasonably accurately, with a daily rate of plus or minus 30 seconds. That sounds not great, but they are first generation electric watches made by Timex, so cut them some slack. Now, these watches were typically a coated base metal, so no stainless steel or solid precious metal. But for $25, what do you expect? I enjoy these watches a lot. They tended to come in a lot of fun case shapes and dial styles. Additionally, they are so prolific in the production of these things that they're pretty cheap to buy nowadays. I tended to pay between 15 and 40 Canuck bucks a piece for these things. That's got to be about 1 or 2 USD, right? Aside from rare dial and case combos, they tend to be pretty good value for money, and they run a pretty standard LR44 battery. No oddball crap like you see on the Landerin 4750 which is otherwise a beautiful watch movement. With these watches being the value option back in the day, a lot of these that you'll find will have a lot of case wear or crystal wear, but in the end, all that really means is that you'll have to polish it to make it look nice, but the effort will be worth it. Remember when I said that this was a moving coil, contact controlled electric watch? It's a surprisingly apt description of it. The circuit diagram you see here is essentially a single loop consisting of a battery, a switch, and a coil. And that's actually it. That's, that's all that's in there. I swear I'm not making this up. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to pull up a diagram of the contactor, and I'm going to also show you a video of the contactor in uh, real life, so you can have an idea of how it actually looks like. Combined with the contact on the balance, which I'll show you, it makes up the switching mechanism that energizes the coil. As the coil swings, it makes contact like a switch, which energizes the coils. On the M40, the balance actually makes contact twice, and thus two impulses can be caused by the coil getting the magnetic field induced by having a current pass through it. 
This happens while the coil is over the fixed magnet on the movement, which causes the balance to swing. Let's have a look at this in slow-mo. According to the Timex service manual, there's a circuit closing when the balance swings up towards the contactor and one in the opposite direction. In case this isn't super clear, we'll also have a look at how it looks on the service manual so you can get a better idea of how the pin actually makes contact with the contactor. On the first one, it shows you the contact as it swings up, and on the next image it shows you what the contact looks like on the downswing. This is exactly what we saw in the actual slow-mo video. So, as I mentioned, when the contact is made, the circuit is closed, and this causes current to pass through the coil, which will then have an induced magnetic field, which provides the impulse against the permanent magnet, causing the balance to move. And, as I said earlier again, the watch functions pretty well as a normal mechanical watch from this point on. If you'd like to know more about how mechanical watches work, I'll post a link to a couple of videos I think are pretty good at explaining this in the details below. I'll also post a link to the service manual if you want to have a detailed look at how this specific Timex works. Alright, so let's go back to the construction of this movement. It is very much in keeping with the Timexes of the time, as I mentioned before. Again, we have stamped bridges, roughly machined gears with minimal jeweling. Even the Arma alloy pivots make a comeback in this model for the balance. Now, another thing that is again familiar is that the dial is again held on by tabs. However, there's an additional annoyance in that most of these movements only fully disassemble from the front of the case, meaning a crystal lift is a must for full service. However, all in all, the electric watch is simple and reliable for pre-quartz watch. They're cheap to buy, and they come, like I said, in a crazy number of case and dial combinations. So if you want a quirky vintage watch, but you don't want to break the bank, I would highly recommend these things. Just buy one that you know is working for sure, or buy a few and take a chance. So I mentioned that there are a bunch of fun things about these watches, and now let's talk about some of the not fun things about just using one of these watches in general. As per the budget status of the watch, a lot of these watches don't have any quick set. Like none at all. Not even the pseudo quick from 9pm to 1am and then back and forward twisty twist. So you have to basically twist the crown a million times to advance a single day. On top of this, it doesn't help that the gearing that they used for the crown is just really slow. So it takes an actual ice age to advance an entire day forward. Another thing that's not really a consequence of the watch directly, but more a consequence of how they're more seen as budget watches, is that they're treated more like throwaway watches. And given the price point and the incredible mass production, it's kind of understandable. But that also means that it's unlikely that you're going to find one that's been serviced for the past several decades. On the flip side of this, the watch itself is actually pretty robust, and the chances are if you pick one up, it'll probably still run with a fresh battery. Lastly, the simplicity of the watch itself does come at a price, and that price is accuracy. As I said earlier, the watch itself, even if you regulate and tinker with the watch, you're probably not going to be able to get this thing to chronometer spec, but that's not the point of these things. But they are still fun. This concludes the Timex Electric review and deep dive. What did you think of it? In a follow-up video, I'll go over the common issues that I see with these things and how to address them. Would you consider getting one? Leave a comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later!